Welcome to the Living Rock Podcast. Well, good morning, everyone. It is great to be able to share the Word of God with you today. And um, I'm excited to see what God is going to do from today. Because the Word of God is always supposed to produce action. The Word of God is always supposed to change us from the inside until it gets out. And um, I'm, I'm really, really um, excited to see what we're going uh, to learn as we go through the book of Numbers together. It's been a while since we've spent um, a teaching series looking in the Old Testament, but the Old Testament has so much for us. And before I get on to specifically one sh- what I'm going to share this morning, I actually just wanted to start um, with a question that I got asked this week. Somebody uh, spoke to me and just said, what is the point of the Old Testament for us now? Why are we looking in the book of Numbers and looking at these different regulations and these different situations that we don't have to follow? That's not necessarily for us now. And it's a great question, and I think it's a question that loads of Christians ask and wonder. But particularly with the book of Numbers, it focuses on the people of God. And it's important for us to understand that God has always and will always only have one people. God didn't give up on Israel. He didn't give up on um, his people and pick the church instead. But actually, as you read through the Old Testament, as you read and you see how God takes his people through um, from all the way from Abraham to the arrival of Jesus to the birth of the church, you see that actually God always had one people. That didn't change. And as Israel goes through its life in the Old Testament, you see this faithful group of people that understood that to follow God was never merely a Um, a hereditary um, a uh, calling. It was never just because of where they were born, but it was an act of faith to put their belief in a God who would save them. And when Jesus came, we see the fulfillment of that. And we see the people of God following Jesus and the people who were faithful to him were always God's people. And so for us now, when we look in the Old Testament, we are actually seeing our history We are seeing our people, not necessarily our physical ancestors, but our spiritual ancestors, those who have followed after Christ, who have followed after God, even when they couldn't see him and they didn't know who he was, they followed him. And we can learn from their victories, we can learn from their mistakes, and as we look at it, I I believe that God wants to say something to us about being his people. So, this morning... I, I, as I looked through numbers, one of the things that really stuck out to me was the fact that there are so many jobs listed. I, I don't know why the book of Numbers was called Numbers. It could have been called Jobs, but I think that name was already taken. That's a little Bible joke for you. Yeah, yeah, there. get hearing groans from everybody. Thank you. But you know, when you look through the book of Numbers, Numbers 2, you've got the arrangement of the camp and how everybody's to camp. Numbers 3, you've got the role of the Levites and what they're supposed to do in. Numbers 4, you've got Kohathites and Gershonites and Merorites and what they're supposed to do in. Chapter 6, you've got the Nazarites and what they're supposed to be doing. In uh, chapter 7, 8, and 9, you've got the handling of all the offerings and how they're supposed to be done. And then in Numbers 12 and 16, you get an example of what happens if you try and steal somebody else's job. Don't do that. Um... In chapter 18, you get more about the jobs of the Levites and the priests. In chapter 19, you get the story of Phineas, who did a job that actually lots of other people should have done, but he ended up doing. In chapter 27, you've got Joshua stepping up and taking over from Moses and his job. And then in chapter 32, you've got all about Reuben and Gad and them still having a job to do, even when they have chosen a different lot of land. And in chapter 33, you get this interesting job for all of Israel, but I'm going to come on to that later. And so all through this book, you've got roles. And, and as I was looking at that, and I, and I looked at the specifics of all the jobs that these people had to do, God reminded me of a scripture. And it's in Ephesians 4. And he reminded me of it in the translation of um, uh, the New Living. And so I'll, I'm going to read this to you from there. And it's In verses 11 to 13, we get the description of the apostles and the prophets and the teachers and the evangelists and the pastors and all that they have to do to bring the body to maturity. But here's the purpose of their work. From uh, from verse 14, it says, Then 
We no longer will be, uh, we'll no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We won't be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the, his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow. And so the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And other translations take that phrase as each part does its own special work. And it's translated as, as each part is working properly. And so when I read that, and I was reading through numbers, I really felt that God wanted to, this, this really strong sense that he wanted to re-emphasize to us the fact that we all have a special work to do, that we all have a specific and special work to do, and that by doing that, the whole body will be working properly. And so I spent quite a bit of time looking at numbers four, because to be honest, I was a little bit baffled, because you've got these, in numbers four, you've got this description of these three different sets of people, okay? The Kohathites, the Gershonites, and the Merorites. And I had the uh, fantastic opportunity of getting to jump into the Hot Rock 5 Zoom this morning, and um, I asked them to help me out with what I wanted to share this morning, and I've asked them to summarize for us, okay, and they're going to put this in the chat in a second, Hopefully, they're definitely going to do this. They're going to tell us what the Gershonites, the Merorites, and the Kohathites did. So, chat, Hot Rock Five kids, tell us what was the job of these people? What were the job that we read about? What were the jobs of these people in Numbers 4? Tension. <laughs> <laughs> okay, getting some people putting in the chat. Okay, I reckon they're just typing now. So I am going to tell you, um, give you a quick overview. This is what I saw when I read it. Okay, the Kohathites were to look after the items in the tabernacle, they were to cover them and transport them safely. The Gershonites were to carry the temple, uh, to, sorry, to carry the curtains of the tabernacle, and the Merorites were to carry the bars and the pillars and the frames of the tabernacle. So they had this really, really specific job to do, okay, but actually, um, they, I found it bizarre that this entire chapter was devoted to essentially this group of people who were to carry things. So I was reading through and I was saying, God, what is it? that you want to say through this? What is it that you're saying in this situation? And as I began to look at it, I, I'm, I quite liked, I like percentages, okay? I like percentages and I like numbers. And so I looked at how many uh, people were tasked with this job. How many people actually got an entire chapter to tell them what to do specifically? And when I looked through it, if you look at these three clans in the context of the whole people of Israel, they were only 1.4% of the entire population. And then the rest of the book, you get so many jobs of the Levites, um, you've even got a whole book beforehand talking about what they were supposed to do, and yet they made up such a small percent of the population. And like I said right at the beginning, it wasn't the Levites that were simply the people of God, but the whole of Israel were the people of God. The whole of Israel were the people of God. So what was it that they were supposed to do? What were they supposed to do? Well, when you continue to read through, you realize that this, this whole other 98.6% of the population, who, from what I'm reading, have two really specific tasks. And because these are the people of God, actually there is something that we can see for ourselves in that today. And when I read through the book of Numbers and I was reading through it, you see the fact that actually the people of God are there to worship God. Their primary function is to worship God. You see, all of the regulations, all of the rules for the Levites, all of their job role was to enable the people of God to worship. 
That was why they were doing the job they were doing. It wasn't that they were doing all of the worship. It was that they were enabling the people of God to worship. And in chapter 28, we see a list of offerings to be brought daily uh, on the Sabbath, monthly, and on all these different festivals. But this is the exciting thing, okay? In 1 Peter 2.9, it tells us, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. And that is incredible. The fact that now we have a mediator. We no longer need to bring our offerings to a priest because we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, who is alive and allows us to be priests unto our God, to bring worship and offerings of acceptable sacrifice. And we can never overstate the importance of the, as the people of God that it is to worship. We must worship. We must bring sacrifices of praise. We must bring sacrifices of good work, uh, of good works, because that is an acceptable sacrifice to God, to lay our lives down as a living sacrifice to our God. No longer through a set of people who have to be there so that we might worship. But Jesus enables us to worship our God. Awesome. And the second is this. And this is what I really felt God wanted me to emphasize this morning. The people of God, the 98.6%, And actually, the Levites themselves, in their position, were to take the land. They were to take the promised land that they were coming into. That was the role of God's people. And this is really important, really important. And so let's turn to Numbers chapter 33. Look at this together, and in verse 50. It says, The Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab, by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you pass over to the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you and destroy all their figured uh, stones and, and destroy their metal images and demolish their high places, and you shall take possession of the land and settle in it, for I have given you the land to possess it. God had given his people a land that needed to be taken. And that was the role of the people of God, to take the land. They were to worship their God. They were to take the land and bring worship to that land. You know, the incredible thing is even after they'd conquered this land, they still had jobs to do. This was a land that was flowing with milk and honey. This was a land that had crops bigger than they'd ever seen. You know, their commission right from the garden, go, go multiply and subdue the earth was still their commission the same as it is for us today to take the land is still our commission today and even when we've taken it to nurture it to grow it to see all the good things come from what God gives us and again you hear this this um, taking possession of the land and it rings in your ear and you think that sounds kind of like a commission I've heard before and you turn to the New Testament and you turn to Matthew 28 and you realize Jesus is still telling his people hey don't just go into one land now but go into all the world making disciples baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit guys the commission hasn't changed We are still to take the land, but we're to take all of the land for Jesus. We're to take this world that will become the world of our God and Christ. Jesus is looking for a people that aren't focusing and looking inside the camp. The 98.6% of us, we're to be working from the land, uh, from the church into the land. The word of God for us directs us and pushes us out. 
You know, there are, God has given. We read in Ephesians those verses before about um, us, before us having our own special work, is that there are other people who are giving us, given a special work to build up the church. There are those who are directed to us as a people. But I'm not saying the maths is exactly right. And I'm not saying that when we balance it out, it'll be 1.4% of us who are looking in and the rest look out. That's not what I'm saying. But it does give us an indication that we should be looking out, that we should be looking to a world if we want to find out why we are here. It doesn't mean that when we come together, we won't have something to contribute. It doesn't mean that when I get home from a day of doing a full-time job, I have to do nothing around the house because, look, we're a family, okay? We all contribute when we come together as the church of God. We all contribute and bring what we have. But it is totally okay for some of us, for a lot of us, for our focus to be outside, to be working from the church, not in working independ independently of each other, not, not gathering and not coming together because I'm called to the world. But actually we realize we are called from this place. We are called from, being, from gathering as the people of God to the world. To take the land for our God. God has a special work for each and every one of us to do. And I want to encourage you with this this morning. Ask him what is it that he wants me to do outside? What is it that he wants me to do into the world? I, I was reading a book a little while ago called Scattered Servants, which many of you may have read, and it's by a guy called Alan Scott. And he's got this fantastic testimony of, of a lady who came to him, and, and she said to him, I really feel that God has gifted me in dance, and he wants me to use this uh, gift in the church. And, and Alan, he, he prayed about it, and he felt, I believe that that is the call of God for you. But we're not going to do that in these four walls. That's not what we need right now as the church. But listen, take that to the world. Extend the kingdom through your gift. And the story goes on to explain that she planted all of these different um, dance studios, created all of these different places, and used them as outreaches. And people are getting saved and coming to know Jesus because this person realized that their gift wasn't just for the people of God, but was to be from the people of God, to extend the kingdom of God into a world that so desperately needs to know a saviour. God has given us all a special work. And kids, okay, into the eyes right now. Look here, okay? I want to speak to you specifically. Thank you, guys. I knew you were typing. I knew you had the answers for us in the chat, so I want to say thank you for that. But right now, I want to share something really specific with you guys. If you go back a couple of books in the Bible into Exodus, you'll probably know the story where Moses led the people out of Egypt. But did you know Pharaoh actually gave Moses a chance to leave? Moses gave, uh, Pharaoh gave Moses a chance to leave, but he said this to him. Pharaoh said to Moses, who's going to go with you? And, Pharaoh, and, and Moses said to Pharaoh, it will be me, it will be my family, it will be all of us children, young and old. It will be animals. You can look at this in Exodus 10, verse 7 for yourself. And Pharaoh says to him, there is no way I will let you take your children. You can send all the men. They can all go, but you can't take your children. And Moses said, no, because they have to come with us. And this is something you guys need to understand. God sees you as so important that he will not leave you behind in his purposes. God has a really special work for you to do that means that he will not leave you. That means that he will not leave you behind. And actually, for God to do everything that he wants to do in this world, he needs you guys to do your special work. The thing that God has created each of you for. Not when you get to being an adult, but as a, chi as a child right now. Amen. You guys are crucial to the plans and purposes of God, the same as I am, the same as all the people in this room are, the same as every person watching this. We are crucial, all of us, to the plans and purposes of God. Amen. And here's the thing. When we, when we look at this description in Numbers 33, we get this um, commission to the people. And it's quite short, you know, if you think of all the different instructions that have been given to the Levites, 
to the different groups about the offerings and what they were supposed to bring. But this, this instruction is simply take the land. It's simply take the land. But you know, as you then again come into the New Testament and we see this commission, we see the commission that says, go, make disciples of all nations. But as you read through the book of Acts, you see all these people getting given specifics in the context of that commission. In the context of that commission, you see Paul being called to the Gentiles. You see Peter being told to go to a certain house and meet with a certain people. You see Jesus being told as he's going around to go to different places by his father. And, there is, and there's this really important aspect that we need to understand that if we accept this commission, if we say, God, yes, I will go, I will take the land, I will go into all the nations and make disciples, he'll tell us the specifics of what we're supposed to do. He'll give us the specific instructions. He'll tell us what to say to that neighbor. He'll tell us what to say to that, that, um, our friend who's sitting next to us at school who asked to borrow a pencil. He'll tell us what to do for that friend who you're in the playground and they're being bullied and they're crying. He'll tell us what to do for that work colleague that is petrified and scared of even going outside at the moment. He will tell us how to take the land, how to bring the kingdom, because we understand that we're not taking a physical land anymore, but actually we're extending the kingdom of God into people's hearts. And as the kingdom comes near them, they see that there is a God who is alive, who can offer them hope. We are extending the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and we all have a special work to do in that. And so, I want to finish with this. And I want to give you a, um, a challenge, really, a job to do in the spirit of numbers. And that's to, this afternoon, as you're eating your lunch, maybe over dinner, talk as a family. Ask each other, what is it that God wants you to do? You know, when we, again, when we read through the New Testament and we see all these specific jobs, some jobs were for life. Paul, that was his job, to take the, the gospel to the Gentiles, and that was him. But then there were other times where different emphasis were put on for different people, and we don't have to have our entire life figured out right now. But God will give us special things to do. Maybe it's a person that God lays on your heart. Maybe it's something that he wants you to do in your workplace. Maybe it's something to take over to your neighbor. Okay, But when that's done, ask him again. But for this afternoon, talk together. If you're at home on your own, why not ring somebody? Why not ring a friend? Discuss together, pray together, ask together, God, what is it you want us to do? Pray for one another and then encourage each other. Keep each other accountable. When, when mum or dad comes home tomorrow night, kids, ask them, did you do the special thing that God asked you to do today? Amen. Parents, ask your children, what did God tell you to do at school today? How did he use you? Because God has a special work for each one of us. Talk about those things together. Stir those things in each other. Don't be restricted Amen. by what I can do in the church, especially when it's tough for the church to gather in the way that we were right now. God may give you something for us as a body because he's always giving gifts to the body so that it can work beautifully and build up. But so much of our work will be to the world. And so I'm going to pray to finish. I've leave you with that challenge. Stir one another. Ask each other, what is the special work you've called me to? But I want to ask Jesus right now to stir our hearts, Lord, for the special things that you've called us to, to do from the church. Thank you that you have made us a people. Thank you that you have brought us together. And thank you, Lord, that as we come together, we all have something to contribute. But then as we all go, as we all go from being together, as we all go from gathering right now, you have something special for us to do into the world, to, to take the land, to see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we want to be part of all that you are doing in this earth. And Jesus, right now I pray and thank you that your spirit has been poured out on all flesh, young and old, sons and daughters, that we all might prophesy, that we all might bring the power of Jesus into this world. 
And so, Lord, I ask that we would be filled afresh with the Spirit, that we would know your power that propels us into the world, and that, God, together, we will take the land as you have desired for us to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being with us. It's a privilege to join together like this, to worship our King. And go now. Let's do our own special work. Thanks for joining us today. Search for us online and get information about upcoming events and more great teaching.